are again in our new Linux related video. This time we will review Ubuntu DDE 20.10, an Ubuntu based operating system with deep in desktop environment. One of our viewers asked us to do a review of Ubuntu DDE, so this is our conclusion. Let's start with the installation. Unlike many of the Ubuntu variants, Ubuntu DDE comes with the Calimaris installer. It's very neat and easy to use. The installer will ask the user several regular questions, such as their location, keyboard layout, partition selection and user details. Then the installer will review all the answers and after that it will install the operating system. The installation process was smooth and with no issues. We have never used a deep in desktop environment before, so we were even more excited to try it. Here's the Ubuntu DDE desktop right after the installation. The deep in desktop environment is famous for being flashy and polished. Ubuntu DDE offers a nice and clean default wallpaper and a panel acting also as a dock on the bottom of the screen. On the right hand side of the panel there is a system tray with several usual suspects such as trash can, power button, time and date, onboard, system tray slider, network, wireless connection, sound volume and language. In the left-hand corner of the screen there's a multitasking view button, then a desktop button and an applications menu. The applications menu is interesting in the sense that it can be converted into a gnome-like full-screen app grid. The system has already offered updates and we opted to install them. While waiting for the updates to be installed, let's check out the Ubuntu DDE's control center. It offers personalization options in the first place, so the user can choose between light, auto and dark desktop themes, and can also pick an accent color for instance. There are also many icon themes pre-installed, then cursor themes and fonts as well. In the control center, the user can tweak many aspects of their system. Now in the center of the dock, there are some pinned apps such as calendar, music, album and file manager. The file manager app in Ubuntu DDE is specific because it gives a preview of all available folders and disks within the systems. Something very similar to the My Computer option in Microsoft Windows. In the Pictures folder, files are offered as thumbnails by default and not in the list view. In the App menu, applications are divided into categories and include Internet, Music, Video, Graphics, Games, Office, System, which offers Synaptic Package Manager and the Ubuntu Software app by default, then Software and finally Other where we added the Simple Screen Recorder app. Now let's change the app menu into the GNOME-like app launcher. Unlike mainstream Ubuntu 20.10, where the app grid is listed vertically, in Ubuntu DDE 20.10 the apps are listed horizontally. We have managed to find our way around the system in Ubuntu DDE. Now it's time to see how we can get the applications we need for our use case. But first, let's see how we can change the wallpaper. The desktop is active in Ubuntu DDE, so we right-click it and choose the option to change the background image and screen saver. Ubuntu DDE is renowned for its use of high-quality default wallpapers. We'll choose this one. Then we need to check out how resource-hungry Ubuntu DDE is. The System Monitor app shows 
that we are currently using 1.31 GBs of RAM, which is pretty high compared to some other GNU slash Linux distributions we have reviewed so far. Ok, it's time to check out the Ubuntu DDE 20.10 software application. It's Ubuntu's default software app. The apps are offered in categories. The software center is showing updates available, so we'll install those updates. But the system reports an update error. We'll deal with that later. Now let's see what kind of apps Ubuntu DDE offers by default. As usual, we search for Audacity our audio editing application of choice. It's offered as a Snap application, but there's an option Audacity to be installed from the Ubuntu repositories, so we opted for that option. Audacity is installed, and let's check it out by starting the app. It's version 2.4.2, .2, the latest one at the time of recording the video. The app is reasonably responsive, which is good, bearing in mind the system is installed on modest hardware. Now let's deal with the update error. We try to fix this via the command line. Let's do this by typing some simple commands, such as sudo apt update then sudo apt upgrade, followed by sudo apt auto remove, and finally sudo apt auto clean. Now, if we go back to the software center, we will see that the issue has been resolved. The next thing we want to do is to install another favorite application, and that is VLC, a very popular media player. We choose to install it. The installation process is successful, so we start the app. Speaking of the Snap apps, let's see how many of them are installed by default. So let's go into the Terminal app again. We type in the Snap list command, and there is a list of the installed Snaps. Just a reminder, the Simple Screen Recorder and VLC were added after the system was installed. None of the Snap apps are pre-installed, but if you want to add one via Software Center, they are mostly offered as Snaps. We have already seen Ubuntu DDE come with Synaptic Package Manager pre-installed. Let's see if we can install the Microsoft Fonts package, which is very important if you need to share your documents with other people not using Linux. Of course, it's the Ubuntu-based distro, so the MS Fonts package is waiting to be installed. The next step is to check out if the package works properly. We start the LibreOffice Writer app. In Ubuntu DDE, LibreOffice is version 7.0.2.2, .2, one of the latest at the time of recording the video. If the MS Fonts package is properly installed, we will be able to change the default fonts. Everything seems to be alright, so we also try typical Bosnian letters. Everything works as it should, which means a huge step forward in our Ubuntu DDE adoption. Despite having a few rough edges, Ubuntu DDE has left a good impression on us. However, our next step is to see how app images work in Ubuntu DDE. We have already downloaded some app images, so let's give them a try. As an example, we take the only Office app image. The system asks if we want to add the execute permission and run the application, which is very user-friendly having in mind that in some other distros a user has to do it by themselves or even to mess with the command line. 
The only office app starts with no issues. Let's close it and try another one. This time it is Caden Live, which is also one of our favorite applications. But while Caden Live is opening, it seems that only office is stuck in the background. It will not close. Caden Live seems to work as expected, but only office freezes. The only thing we can try now is to try to force it close. Fortunately, we find out that Ubuntu DDE offers something like the Task Manager in MS Windows, and we manage to close only Office with a couple of clicks. Let's try it again. We opt for running the app image and try to open the document, but the app seems to be stuck one more time. If we try to open the same document in LibreOffice Writer, we will see that everything works ok. Something is wrong, so we have to again use the Task Manager to terminate the freezing app. Some app images work in Ubuntu DDE, but some don't, so a user should be cautious about this. In Debian and Ubuntu worlds, installing .deb files is an important part of the user experience, so we have to check out if it works with Ubuntu DDE. For the video, we will pick up the Opera browser installation file. The system offers the file to be installed via Software Center. In situations like this one, once the download is finished, the software app opens up and offers the installation, but now nothing happens. So we go into the Downloads folder and manually choose the option of the installation via Software Center. The installation was successful and the Opera browser loads without any trouble. That means that installing .deb files works out of the box in Ubuntu DDE. As we have already mentioned in the video, Ubuntu DDE offers a multitasking view. Let's see how it works. Just a reminder, we have already had experience with multitasking view in our elementary OS Hira builds, where it works flawlessly and logically. So we will take that for comparison with the way Ubuntu DDE does it. Ubuntu DDE offered us two virtual workspaces. We opened several applications to test how the multitasking view works, but first, in the control center, we were looking for the necessary keyboard shortcuts, which were easy to find. So, to switch to the next virtual desktop, all you need to do is to press Ctrl plus left or right keys combination. We were asking ourselves, if it was our first time using it, or if the elementary OASIS way was much easier and intuitive. Right-clicking on an app icon in the dock does not offer the option to move the app to the next workspace, but if you click on the multitasking view icon in the dock, then you are offered all the open apps and virtual desktops. Just click the app you wish to work with, and that's it. The same is with the apps. You can even close apps in the multitasking view. Mm -hmm. 
No problem. All it takes is some time to figure it out. So, with the key combination, it's easy to move the Open App to the next workspace. So, after having used it for a couple of weeks, we think that Ubuntu DDE is a fully fledged operating system. But do we recommend it? Well, if you want the latest and greatest hardware, we certainly do. But on lower end or mid range machines, it might stutter and you could not have a smooth computing experience. Have you tried Ubuntu DDE and what's your experience with it? Share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching the video and see you next time!